How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Amatsutsumi. We are now in the uh, Kyoko route, and she now knows our deep, dark secret about uh, Kododama. Yes, she actually witnessed Makoto using Kododama, and I guess he decided to just spill the beans, maybe to clear his guilty conscience or whatever, and he was planning to throw a Kododama at her, but instead... I guess we're just trusting her to keep the secret, which I'm cool with that. I think that's an interesting twist to everything here. So uh, let's see what happens next. School has ended for the day. After giving it some thought, I've decided to walk back with Kyoko today. There was that whole business earlier, but also I'm just interested in learning more about her. Is it though? She smiles shyly, looking worried that people might be watching. Could it be that this is your first time walking home with a boy? Oh? What were you doing? Just going home together? Oh, don't worry, neither was I. And I'm still not, but I can't help but doubt the accuracy of her description given the way she interacts with me now. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that she never had any friends growing up. Well, that's not exactly the right way of thinking about it. It could be that she deliberately or that she deliberately avoided making friends back then. Character development She's hard on herself, but I think she would do just fine socially if she could be like this all the time. Well, I suppose you could say that. I explained to her my upbringing in the village without going into too many specifics. So, so that's what, or that, that is what's been passed down in our village, excuse me, but even we don't know whether it's really true. It's even possible that one of our ancestors made up the descendants of God's idea as an explanation for our Kododama power. I mean, we're not really omnipotent or anything. I explain more about what exactly my Kododama is like. And then we use it on her, right? <sighs> After hearing my explanation, Kyoko seems impressed, even moved. Her eyes are sparkling in fascination. It feels funny to be on the receiving end of all this adoration, but it's not a bad feeling either. Well, Kododama is something like I was or is something I was born with. Excuse me, so it feels totally natural, like it's a part of me. To be honest, I can't really think of it as amazing myself. To me, it's kind of like how, or like if I had longer than average arms or legs. Isn't it the same for you, Kyoko? Uh -huh. She looks at me blankly and cocks her head to the side in a cute motion. I mean, your ability to see spirits. I wondered if it felt like having excellent eyesight or, or hearing. So, this Tada. Then, what happened that caused you to obtain said ability? Oh, I see. Come on, ask. We need to pry. I, I, I am now very curious. Uh, something must have happened that caused her to gain her ability then. Yes, that's right. That makes sense. A skill that you develop later in life always feels a little more foreign to you than an inborn skill. I could use my Kododama to make her stop seeing the spirits temporarily, but... Hmm... I don't think that's the case personally. Well, 
でも、Still? もし幻覚自分の頭が見せているものだとしたらよくできすぎているなとも思いますいろんな意味でとても私なんかに作れるものではなさそうで Well I did just get done playing Amori In other words she feels that the spirit she sees must be real because they seem to transcend her own powers And I'm playing Chaos Head as well. I mean, the human mind is a very crazy thing. I can more or less understand that feeling. I've been waiting for my own answer. But, when I met Makoto, I think that I have to be wrong. I think that I have to be wrong. I think that I have to be wrong. To focus on the conversation, Kyoko trips over an unevenness on the path. Whoa. I managed to reach out and catch her before she falls down. Are you okay? I'm glad you're being so talkative, but be careful, okay? Hi. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. 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 I told you, don't worry about that. We're friends, aren't we? Just as I take her hand to help her regain her balance, something happens. What the fuck? What was that? <laughs> For just a moment, Kyoko shivers in my arms. Uh, Kyoko? I instinctively grab her arms as she tries to stand up again. Ma. Makoto kun? Sorry, uh, I, I just wanted to check something. Ha. Hi. Did a ghost happen to pass by us just now? <gasps> Wide eyed, she searches my face. Mi. Mi eta n desu ka? Makoto kun ni mo? Ooh, spooky. I think so. It went right by us, didn't it? Going from here to over in that direction. <gasps> from your face, I'm guessing I'm right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so not that I was doubting that she has the ability to see ghosts and whatever else, but、uh, the reason why I brought up the two other playthroughs that I'm going through right now. Um. No, the human mind can definitely, you know, come up with very realistic things.、Uh, for example, when I was younger, in my childhood room, in my childhood home,、uh, there was just a teeny tiny bit of light in my room, and that was enough to make it look like through the exit slash entrance of my room that someone was peeking in. But I knew better. But it looked so real. From my perspective and my young childhood mind, you can see things that there's just no way they can, you know, be real, right? They look so real, though. You know, it's the human mind is crazy. Things that you don't think are real could be real, things that you think are real could not be. That's all I wanted to bring up. She looks amazed as she extricates herself from me and stands up again. I feel exactly the same way. I wonder how I was able to see it. It was so sudden. There's nobody around who could have put a kododama on me, and I doubt it was a hallucination induced by Kyoko's descriptions either. Even if it was a hallucination, that wouldn't explain how I saw it move in the same direction that she did at the same time she did. <sighs> also, hallucinations, delusions, all of that. It's not just visual either. Your mind will start to play with you. You'll think that you're hearing things. You think that, you know, you're being watched or something like that. The human mind will fuck you over. She shakes her head in confusion. I suppose it's only natural that she wouldn't know. This really came out of nowhere after all. By the way, I just want to check, but. Hi. Did you see any other ghosts on our way here? Eh, I could scava. さっきのよりも少し遠いところにいましたけど。I see. But I didn't see any of the other, of those other ones. The only difference I can think of is. Kyoko, can you come here for a minute? はい。Oh. As she steps closer, I hug her tightly. ま、ま、まことくん。Don't get worked up, Kyoko. I just want to try something. え Okay. I want you to look around and see if you can find any ghosts nearby. 
She looks thoroughly confused, or she sounds thoroughly confused, but she nods and starts looking around from within my embrace. I follow her gaze with my own, trying to see what she sees. After a while... Looking in the direction she indicates, I see a few dark shadows approximately shaped like human beings. Can we go talk with them? Yeah, I see them. They're moving away from us, right? Okay, now it's pretty clear that I am in fact seeing the same things that she is. Now keep your eye on those ghosts. After she confirms, I let go of her and take a step back. It's just as I thought. Kyoko, are the ghosts still in the same place? I see. Okay, one more time. I step to her and hug her again. I see them. Apparently I can see ghosts if I touch Kyoko, in particular her skin. She seems to have realized it too. Yeah, I don't know why, but it seems like when I'm touching you, I can share your senses. Maybe you just never notice because you don't come into contact with other people? At a loss for words, she winces as if I struck a deep nerve. I was just joking. Did none of those people ever see a ghost? In that case, there must be something per uh, special between you and me in particular. I have no idea why that might be, though. But these ghosts... I look back toward the ghosts again. I didn't think they would be like this. I get an indescribable but unpleasant feeling all over my body just by looking at them. Is this something the ghosts are directly doing to me, or...? Okay, but the stupid and dumbass part of me really wants to look at them, only to regret it later, you know? Okay, understood. She knows best, so I take her at her word. But for now, I need to escape from this spirit world. Whew. As soon as I let go of Kyoko, I stop seeing the ghosts, and the unpleasant feeling quickly abates. She peers worriedly at my face. You're right. I'm a little shocked right now. I didn't think they would be so eerie. What the fuck did you expect? Does Kyoko spend all her waking hours feeling like that? After that, I asked Kyoko to hold hands with me as we walked. I wasn't looking forward to seeing the ghosts again, but I wanted to get a better idea of the world Kyoko lives in and share it with her for a little while. At first, she was hesitant, worrying about the effects the ghosts would have on me, but in the end, she relented. Luckily, I'm very adaptable, so after a while, I started getting used to the unpleasant feeling that came with seeing the ghosts. The important thing is to ignore it and not let it get to you. I kept that in mind as I looked around, observing our surroundings as we walked. After And after experimenting in various ways, I've learned several things. First, the way Kyoko and I see ghosts is subtly different. She seems to see their forms much more clearly than I do. Apparently, some of them even look as real as living humans to her. Second, Kyoko can not only see the ghosts, but touch them too. But I couldn't touch them, even when I was hugging her. Hmm. I also don't really like that little tune that plays. It's a little too spooky for me. Third, the closer we got to the shrine, the fewer ghosts we saw. Kyoko conjectured that it's because the area around the shrine complex has purity-preserving powers which probably drives away ghosts and spirits. Wait, then what about my guardian spirit? I thought spirits find it hard to enter the grounds of the shrine. Yes, 
I don't really understand. As I look on in puzzlement, she frowns, trying to think of a way to explain it to me. I contemplate how cute she looks when she's thinking hard. Hmm, so basically, the spirits can come here if they really want to, but they usually don't want to? I see. It's like if I said a Kodo Dama to someone, telling them that a certain place was annoying to be in or something like that. By the way, is it just me or are there are a lot of people here today? Unlike the last time I came to the shrine, there are many people milling around in the shrine complex. Uh, Oh, right, you mentioned that ceremony the other day. So they're already preparing for that, huh? Got it. But if that's the case, don't you have a lot of chores to do, too? You must be busy. これが夏祭りの準備になると、人手が足りなくなって、私もいろいろ借り出されるんですけど、街の外からも人が来るので、かなり賑やかで盛り上がりますよ。Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. A water lantern ceremony, a large-scale summer festival. I never experienced either of those back in the village. Very interesting indeed. Ah, maybe I shouldn't be calling the Water Lantern Ceremony fun since it's supposed to be in remembrance of the dead, right? She smiles and shakes her head. It's like the same thing with the festival in uh, Higurashi, right? Yeah. She's right, of course. She squints up at the sky. It seems like she has something more to say. Kyoko, which group are you in? Do you find the ceremony painful or fun? Oh, okay, cool. I guess don't tell us. She speaks softly with a slightly sad smile on her lips. Well, Makoto now does know about his parents. Yes, I do. The faces of several people who were important to me flash through my mind. How about you? Yes. This is getting a, uh, I'm getting a Wonder Egg priority feel here. She turns her head and looks off into the distance. In that direction is the lake. Well, I think we got, like, at least half an hour of the video to go. I'd be happy to. I can tell from her expression that she's always wanted to open up about this to someone. And I'm curious to learn more about Kyoko's past, too. You know, when I first glanced at the uh, end of the sentence there, I thought, I thought she said it happened about 10,000 years ago. I was like, huh? Kyoko went on to tell me the story of her childhood friend Suzuka, who passed away. It's a nice name. One day, ten years ago, Suzuka and Kyoko had gone out to the lake together. Even back then, Kyoko was introverted, but thanks to Suzuka's encouragement, 
she had started coming outside to play more often. Suzuka is a pretty cool racetrack. Uh, Kyoko admired Suzuka and looked up to her as the big sister she never had. Suzuka was a very good one. She looks down ruefully. Perhaps it's still painful for her to remember. She hugs herself and shivers. Her gaze is directed down at her feet. Wait, that's... She lifts her hands and looks hard at them, maybe remembering what they felt on that day. Hmm. Kyoko's voice is trembling slightly. I'm sure that to her, this isn't just a memory of long ago. It's something that weighs heavily on her even now. It must have been very hard for you. I know all too well how unimaginable the misery, the misery must be of losing your close childhood friend. No longer able to stop the welling up of emotion, Kyoko starts weeping silently. Kyoko, come here. I gently pull her toward me and stroke her hair. She doesn't resist and leans against me, sobbing. I wonder if this is uh I wonder if this is related to how uh, Kuichi feels about uh Kyoko. Maybe Suzuka was related to him? Perhaps. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to figure out why there's such a disconnect between Kyoko and Kuichi. That I'm not really sure about, but this could be related. This could not be. I'm just throwing a wild ass prediction out. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's happening? Suddenly a searing light flashes across my vision. Wait, what on earth just happened? I'm assaulted by dizziness, just as if I'd spoken a strong Kododama. My arms and legs seem to go limp, but I managed to stay standing by clinging to Kyoko. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kyoko. I, I just felt dizzy suddenly. Yeah, I, I think so. I was caught off guard by the abruptness of it, but I don't feel like I'm in any lasting danger. I hear her gasp in astonishment. We are in ghost mode. Is she seeing a ghost here? Huh? Oh... Uh-oh. A young girl has suddenly appeared in front of us without the slightest warning. No. This isn't a human being. <sighs> Kyoko opens her trembling lips to respond. What did we just do? What did she just do, actually? <sighs> yeah, this this isn't us. This is This is all her. Ooh, it's getting kind of mysterious here. Is that the end of the day? Do we just go home? Is it like in Persona that was like our, our one day activity? Time to go home for the night? I feel like there's like a lot more that needed to go on there. I wake up at the usual time, but my body feels heavy and my head feels fuzzy. 
It's the kind of feeling you get when you exhausted yourself the day before and still haven't rested up enough yet. But it's not so bad that I feel like going back to sleep. Huh? Oh, what? <laughs> huh? As I get out of bed, I see Kyoko sitting in the corner of the room looking back at me. I'm, I'm somehow seeing Kyoko as the more and more of a of a better character in this game. I, I don't know why, though. She bows apologetically. Oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you there. I'm the one who told her last night that she should come here immediately if anything was wrong. If the knock on the door didn't wake me up, I must have been more tired than I thought. Did something happen? I see. She came here out of concern for the other two. That's very like her. Oh, you're quite an early riser, aren't you? She smiles softly. Unlike me, she seems to be in a great mood. The reason is obvious, of course. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just like yesterday, when I take Kyoko's hand, I see Suzuka standing silently next to her. Good morning, Suzuka. I greet her, though I don't expect a reply. She simply stands there in silence like a doll. Okay, yeah, let's, let's flash back to, you know, the day prior. Yesterday, after the bright flash of light, Suzuka appeared out of nowhere and Kyoko kept shaking her head in utter disbelief at what she was seeing. Then she wept openly for a while, her eyes locked on Suzuka. Luckily, most of the crowd at the shrine had packed up and left a few minutes earlier, so there was nobody to stare at us. Yeah, what luck. Kyoko, is she... Hi, Suzuka desu. Wiping her tears with one hand, she looked at me and nods. No. This was reality. Though it was a little strange to be calling a ghost real. Hello. I tried speaking to the apparition, which was standing there in silence with a blank expression on its face. Kyoko had told me earlier that I should avoid interacting with ghosts or drawing their attention. But unlike the other ghosts that we've seen on our way to the shrine, I don't feel unpleasant when I look at this Suzuka ghost. Also, unlike the other ghosts, I can see her rather clearly, not just as a human-shaped shadow. Suzuka didn't answer my greeting. Her pretty face added to the impression that she looked like a life-size doll. Since she had called out Kyoko's name f at first, I thought she should be able to talk, but more importantly... Kyoko, did you do this? <laughs> well, since you're a shrine maiden, I thought maybe you're able to summon ghosts or something. She shook her head quickly. It was a good point. I don't have any power like that either. It was a mystery, and it was too convenient to have been a coincidence. My best guess was that Kyoko could have somehow used my power to summon Suzuka. <laughs> When I held her hand, I was able to see ghosts like she did. Maybe conversely, she became able to use Kododama. Of course, all I could do was hypo hypothesize, yeah. That's the word. Kyoko knelt down in front of Suzuka and wept with happiness. Meanwhile, Suzuka just stood there with that blank expression. Her eyes sometimes moved slightly, so she wasn't entirely unresponsive, but she looked like she wasn't paying any attention to the world of the living. 
I felt bad to inject a dose of reality when Kyoko was so happy, but I had to ask. So what should we do now? <laughs> Kyoko looked at me uncomprehendingly. As I thought, she was too occupied with her longtime dream coming true for her to think about anything else right then. Honestly, I wasn't exactly perfectly calm either after everything that had happened over the day. I mean, you always wanted to meet Suzuka again, but what did you plan to do after that? Probably her main goal had been to just see Suzuka's face one more time. But now that Suzuka appeared, things wouldn't just end there. <laughs> she nodded and then turned back to Suzuka. Tears welled up in her eyes again as she spoke to Suzuka. Suzuka remained as silent as ever. Maybe she didn't recognize Kyoko because 10 years had passed? No, that couldn't have been it, since she had called Kyoko's name at first. It looks like she's not in a state where we can communicate with her properly. So... I see. Based on what she had said earlier, I guessed that she would want to properly mourn Suzuka's death. Because Suzuka's body was never found, Kyoko was never able to fully accept and process her death. So my guess was that she wanted to meet Suzuka's ghost as a way to get closure after all these years. If so, what Kyoko needed to do now was to help Suzuka leave this world and go to heaven. And that's something that I could do. I think I could probably help Suzuka pass on from this plane using my Kododama power. Of course, I've never done such a thing before. But Kyoko had said on the way here that ghosts are like thinned out filaments of leftover life force. If that's the case, Kododama, which is a power based on life force, should have a high chance of working on them. I understood her feelings well. She had just met someone who normally would never have seen again, or who she would never seen again. Of course, she wouldn't want to let go of that. But I felt that just keeping Suzuka by her side without understanding the situation properly would lead to problems eventually. Maybe if Suzuka could become Kyoko's guardian spirit or something? Okay, you can do whatever you need to. I might have been the catalyst that caused this to happen, but at the end of the day, this was Kyoko's issue to solve. For the time being, Suzuka's ghost didn't seem malicious or dangerous, so I decided it would be fine to wait and see what happened. If by some chance things started looking like they were going bad, I could always step in and solve things then. Or so we say. We might be walking a tightrope, unable to see what lay ahead. But that was no different from my whole adventure in coming to this town in the first place. I think I'll head home now. I don't want to get in the way of your reunion with Suzuka. She looked at me with concern, thinking about how I had staggered earlier. Thanks, but I think I'm alright now. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I had fun too. But if you need anything or anything is wrong, contact me right away. Okay, see you later then. She bowed politely, and I turned to leave the shrine grounds. But after a few moments... Uh-oh. I suddenly felt like an invisible hand had grabbed me and pulled me backward. What? I whirled back to face the two of them, but there was nothing there. Kyoko ran up to me wide-eyed. I suddenly felt like something pulled me backward. Did you see something? Huh. Then I guess it wasn't a ghost. 
。私と誠くんと鈴鹿だけです。Then I wonder what that was just now. It was a pretty strong pull, I felt. やっぱり、少し休んでいった方が。No, that wasn't a stagger just now. I was literally pulled backward by something. I was still curious about what could have pulled me, but since it wasn't a ghost, I decided to ignore it. I might have just imagined it after all. Sorry for scaring you. I'll leave for real this time. Hi. Okay, I'll take it. She bowed again. I waved goodbye and then started walking away more carefully this time. But after I had walked a certain distance, I felt the pull again and couldn't take another step. After that, Kyoko and I experimented with the phenomenon a little bit. We soon realized that the pulling force appeared once I separated more than about 10 meters from Kyoko. It was pure speculation, but we concluded that some kind of link must have been formed between the two of us to channel our powers. We couldn't predict whether it was temporary or permanent, but we had no way of cutting it. After brainstorming some more, we decided that I would take Kyoko back home with me to the Oribe household for the time being. Of course, Suzuka came along too. Ah, okay. Ended up using my Kododama to convince Kyoko's family to let her sleep over. At first, I let Kyoko try to speak a Kododama using our link, but it seems she hadn't become able to freely use Kododama after all. When she spoke to her parents, It just came out sounding like regular words, and I didn't feel my power being used. Actually, her parents seemed to really love and trust her, so even without the power of Kododama, they weren't strongly opposed to the idea. They were mainly worried about whether the Oribe family would be inconvenienced, or incon yeah, inconvenienced, excuse me, by Kyoko staying at our house. And they were actually happy that Kyoko had made a close, a close enough friend to be invited to their house. As for Azuki san and Kokoro, I used my Kododama to tell them to think nothing of it if they or to think nothing of it if they saw Kyoko inside the house. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. The only problem was what to do with Mana. I explained the whole situation to her and asked her to cooperate. After hearing the story, she seemed pretty annoyed but finally agreed. Her one condition was that Kyoko would sleep in Kokoro's room with her, not in my room. All right. And I guess that's how we're here. That's more or less what happened yesterday, now it's the next morning. By the way, Mana tried touching Kyoko too, but she wasn't able to see Suzuka or any other ghosts. So there must be something special between me and Kyoko after all. Mana was not very happy about that, or the fact that I had to stay within 10 meters of Kyoko at all times. She asked why I didn't solve the whole situation by blowing away Suzuka's ghost with my Kododama. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then she started trying to do it herself. After much begging and pleading from Kyoko, with some words from me as well,、uh, she reluctantly said that she'd wait for a while. But as I warned Kyoko, the longer this drags out, the more likely it is that Mana will try to intervene again. Even ignoring Mana, we can't live within 10 meters of each other forever. So once Kyoko is ready, we'll have to find a solution. Thanks. I think some more as I sip on the tea Kyoko prepared. Kyoko anticipates that Suzuka's consciousness will grow stronger the longer she stays with us. Eventually, maybe we can talk to her properly. But even Kyoko admits that it's nothing more than a hunch, or maybe even just wishful thinking. How is Suzuka now? Kyoko reaches her hand out to me. While I grasp it, I see Suzuka looking at me blankly. Or maybe she's looking through me. Her gaze is distant, so it's hard to tell. It reminds me of how cats sometimes stare at nothing.、Uh, she does seem a little more mentally present than yesterday, but not to the point that we would be able to communicate with her. So I've noticed that、um, the, the colored fonts. For、all the characters are based on their eye color, right? So, why was hers green? Suzuka's, that is. Kyoko is looking at Suzuka with a truly contented smile. Since Suzuka is still how she was 10 years ago, they look less like childhood friends and more like sisters, or even a mother and her daughter. 
Kyoko said that Suzuka was like an older sister to her back then, so maybe she's enjoying the feeling of having the opposite relationship now. Looking at how happy Kyoko is, I'm glad about what's happened. But at the same time, I worry about how painful it will be for her to let Suzuka go for a second time. Still, all we can do now is uh, try to make things go as well as possible on the way to that eventful parting. Or eventual parting, which will probably also be eventful. Let's be real. It's gonna be interesting. It's lunchtime and I'm helping out at the cafe just in case I've asked Kyoko to sit down at one of the tables closer to the kitchen. It could be problematic if I run into the 10 meter boundary in the middle of cooking. Oh, she's in a different outfit. She in her wacky and wild outfit. She just sits there in one of the corner seats doing nothing. And since this is the cafe part of the building, Kokoro and Azuki-san react as if she's just dropped in as a customer. As a Kododama user, maybe I'm not the right person to say this, but it really is amazing how flexible human perception is. Huh. <sighs> Lunchtime rush ends, and most of the customers leave. Azuki-san has been on break since a little while ago. But we're still open for business, so new customers do occasionally come in. Oh ho! Hotaru peeks into the cafe and opens the door. Hello, Hotaru. Without waiting to be seated, she trots up to the counter and sits down in front of me. She whispers to me, looking in Kyoko's direction as I place a glass of ice water on the counter. You mean Kyoko? Oh. Oh my god, Hotaru is a very interesting character, ain't she? Wait, you can see that? It's clear she's talking about Suzuka. Will she ever stop surprising me? You can see Ghost too? I whisper back to her so no one else can hear. Yes, she's a ghost, apparently. Hotaru sits down wordlessly and starts to drink her water. It's wild. We've seemingly jumped into a whole brand new section of the game. This whole new concept here, this mechanic that is suddenly opened up with the Kododama. You think you've seen it all, but no, it gets a little bit more fucky, just a little bit. You're taking this pretty calmly. A little bit. I still see no trace of surprise on her face as she look or as she puts her half-empty glass back on the counter and looks deep into my eyes. Well, to make a long story short, it's because I've been helping someone out again. I can't explain everything out here in the cafe, so I summarize things as briefly as I can. She pretends to read the menu as I whisper, so others in the area will think I'm explaining the menu items to her. I hope so too. She glances at Kyoko and Suzuka out of the corner of her eye again. I still don't understand how she's able to see Suzuka. Unlike Kyoko, she doesn't normally see ghosts. Maybe there's a type of ghost that's visible to certain people and not others? But the weird thing is, even my Kododama doesn't work on Hotaru. So how can Suzuka be visible to her? I thought her body might have something or some kind of physical difference from other people that gave her immunity to spiritual powers. But if that were the case... Anyway, that's not important. Hotaru's the girl I've made a promise with, and I know I can trust her, and I want to trust her. Treat her well? What do you mean? Hotaru grins and then suddenly narrows her eyes confidentially. Uh, 
Ah, uh, I didn't think of that. It would be very sad for Suzuka to suffer a second death without even understanding her first one. She smiles gracefully, downs the rest of her water, and stands up. This time she drops the whisper and speaks in a fairly loud voice. Probably she's trying to make sure people nearby hear her. Kokodo, hearing Hotoru's sudden outburst, leaves the table she was cleaning up and comes over to us. Flashing a smile, Hotoru waves her hand a couple times and exits the cafe. That's kind of what we're wondering too, but in a different sense. She probably left because she realized her presence would only complicate matters with Kyoko and Suzuka. I'm so glad that Hotoru is such a considerate person. Among other things, there's a lot going on with her. I can't wait for Hotoru's section of the game. There's a lot we need to find out about her. The sun descends through the sky and soon the cafe is almost totally empty. Kokodo goes on break too, and I'm left as the only one on duty. But there are no new orders coming in, so I'm not busy. <sighs> Thanks, and sorry for the bother. Kyoko had asked if she could help with anything, so I decided to take her offer and assign her some work. But she worked harder than I expected. She looks down and to her side with a cheerful smile. I'm not touching Kyoko, so I can't tell. But that's probably where Suzuka is standing. I'm happy you feel that way, but it's fine, really. After all, technically this isn't my house at all. Mana and I are freeloading on the Oribe family just as much as Kyoko is. I think that's just because Mana likes lazing around in her room more than socializing. But anyway, Kyoko is right that we owe Mana a favor for letting us go ahead with this arrangement. Would you like to be closer with Mana? Personally, I'd like Mana to be friends with Kyoko. But, well, sometimes people just aren't compatible. Simply sticking two people together doesn't always result in them getting along. Huh. Kyoko, are you attracted to girls too? Yeah, sure, let's go with that. I see. Mana really is the opposite of Kyoko in some ways. She sighs and slumps her shoulders. And what did she say? I can pretty much guess what Mana said, but I figured I'd ask anyway. Yep, just as I thought. I don't think she really meant it that harshly, though. Mana never couches her words in euphemism, so people might think she's a much colder person than she really is. In this case, she probably only meant what she said. But actually, I'm surprised you don't get angry at her even when she's rude to you. Of 
本当に感謝しています。一体どうしたら、私のこの気持ちを伝えられるんでしょうか。伝えたいと思うことそのものが、もうすでにおこがましいんですよね。Her voice dwindles with every sentence. Don't look down on yourself so much. And I don't think Mana hates you either. It's more likely that right now Mana just doesn't have any interest in Kyoko either way. She agreed to be friends with Kyoko on my request, but she still sees everyone other than me as being below her. But that doesn't mean that she, she dislikes them, excuse me. Just that she's not very interested. So yeah, I think she's simply not interested in you.、Uh, there are some things in the outside world that have drawn her interest, like manga and food. But for most things, especially when they don't involve me, she could not care less. A look of despair comes across Kyoko's face. Oops. I think I should have chosen my words more carefully. Come to think of it, I think she first opened up to Kokoro over their shared love of manga. One day, Kokoro lent Mana some shoujo manga to help her kill time. And she became obsessed with it. She finished the first volume in a flash and went back to Kokoro to ask for the next volume, or so I heard. Then what about food? Yeah, Mana has a pretty big appetite, so I think she has a weakness for tasty foods. Especially sweet things like donuts and such. I remember once when we were kids, a shopping expedition from the village came back with donuts, and Mana devoured most of them. Donuts! Kyoko's eyes sparkle. Huh? Kyoko, you can cook donuts? I thought you could only buy donuts in store. Well, somebody has to make them. But now I'm hearing that you can cook them yourself? I think it should be fine. We should probably ask Azuki san first, though. I'm interested in the recipe, too. What do you need for the ingredients? Alright, l we're getting into some donuts. And not the kinds that you、uh, create out of NASCARs and shit. No, 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 no. The eating kind. Okay, well, we will save it there. And we made some pretty good progress. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, this whole section here of this story has introduced a whole new concept to us. Sure, we knew that Kyoko could see ghosts, but now we're being involved. We're actually directly getting tied into it and seeing a whole new variation of our power and whatever the fuck her power is, because she obviously has something. I'm on board. Straight up, this shit is interesting. The fact that it could just advance in such a way, this story. Super cool. Super cool. Thank you all for watching this episode. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.